I, as he said, I was actually born in Lagos, Nigeria, and I lived there my whole life till I was 13, and I moved to Canada in December 2010 at the mercy and generosity, generosity of my parents, because it really opened my eyes to the amount of opportunities that are here, because like, I didn't really always have those, so that's one of the reason, things that pushed me to get involved. So when I came here, I wasn't always involved in really in my community. I was just a new kid in school, just struggling to fit in. And I came in in grade eight and things were a bit tough for me. Obviously, everyone goes through it in their life. I also dealt with bullying, being the new kid, having a ridiculously thick accent that you could barely hear a word I was saying. <laughs> but I fought through it. And when I came into high school in grade nine, I got lucky. That's why I like to say I got lucky that a teacher noticed me one day and asked me to come join the Athletic Council. And it was from there that I started to get involved. And I went to this leadership conference called OELC, and it's the Ontario Educational Leadership Center, and that's pretty much where I like to say it was the turning point in my life. And that was where I really learned that it was important to get involved and to make a difference and not to just sit by and let life pass you by. So with, with all of that, I was able to join my student council. I was able to run as a student trustee, and now I'm a, one of the executive members of OSAECO. So I like to say the Canadian education system did me pretty well. But my question to you is, what about those students who weren't so as lucky as me? What about those students who didn't see a teacher in the hallway and weren't asked? The students that have let life pass them by and sit in the hallway every day without purpose. They're also part of our education system, and we can't just say, because one thrives, we'll let 100 fall. So I like to say, like, I've done well for myself in the system, but not, it doesn't work out so well for everyone else. So that's what I'd like to address to you today is, what actions can you take in your school boards, in your faculties, in your classrooms, to make sure that every student is being accounted for and we're all being given fair opportunities to thrive? Thank you. When I was asked about like speaking here, they said what circumstances developed you into the person that you've become and the leader have you become? And here I'm thinking, gee, I'm a leader? Like, so I, uh, I was thinking about it and I thought about the fact that I moved nine times before high school and how that changed the way I interact with my students and how I really react to every situation. And I'd like to share one story with you if I could. So in grade five, I moved to Dubai and the national language there is Arabic. So in my class, there's like all locals and I'm feeling a little bit shy and timid because I really don't know how to feel, how to fit in, right? I feel like an outsider. So because I moved so many times before that, I made it work. About uh, halfway through the school year, a boy named Saeed Al Mahmoud. He moved in from another rival school, and for the next five days, he was in the back of the class, complete shy, timid, never hand up for any of the questions the teacher asked. He was really nervous. And so, me being like understanding of his situation, I, uh, when the recess bell rings, I said, hey, do you, uh, you want to come play soccer with us? And he said, okay. So, uh, and just a quick reminder, my friends and I, we only play soccer, not only for the love of the game, but we just really wanted to impress the female counterparts. And so when, he, when Saeed comes on the field, he scores eight goals in the recess, and needless to say, we were no longer the shining stars. And from that point on, the next few months of the school year, he was sitting in the front of the class, always with his hand up, homework always done, one of our top classmates like in uh, academics. So that just goes to show how when you're coming into a certain setting, feeling like an outsider, when you can relate to something that's universal, that everyone has a common interest or a passion for, then you can automatically build a bond without even knowing it. And that's just one story. The life of a high school student or even a student in general is like the life of a butterfly. 
You see, we come into the education system so young and tender the way a caterpillar enters the cocoon. Then as years progress, that caterpillar slowly develops out of that cocoon and hatches into a beautiful butterfly. And soon, next year, Paul and I, we're going to be butterflies and we're be floating away. And I just want to end off with saying, although the education system has been doing great, d'être bon ne suffit pas, de changer pour le mieux est nécessaire. To be good is not enough, but to change for the better is always needed. I'd like to end off by that, and I thank you again. I'm Paul and I.